One of the most recognized sounds of the season is, of course, the sound of those bell ringers from the Salvation Army. But the organization does a lot more than ring its red kettle bells this season. Major Steve Morris is the area commander for the Salvation Army National Capital Area, and he's here today with a look at how you can be a part of the giving this year. Good to see you once again, Thank you. Major Morris. It's great to be here. So the red kettle drive in full swing? Absolutely. We hear them, the bells ringing outside the stores. We kicked them off November 12th and uh, will continue to Christmas Eve. And how is it going this year? Actually, uh, we're struggling a little bit, frankly. Uh, we're behind about 26% uh, from where we need to be for goal. So uh, a couple of days ago, we published that we would need $100,000 a day between now and Christmas Eve in order to uh, uh, cover our goal what and our needs. Wow, down, 20, uh, down a quarter. Yeah. What do you think is behind that? Uh, we have a few less opportunities to be in front of places this year. I think that's a major uh, piece. We're uh, pushing to online and text giving and that sort of thing. So uh, we're trying everything we can do. I, I think the uh, reputation of the Army speaks for itself. But uh, I think if we're not as uh, uh, visible, maybe, uh, it's tougher for people to find us, perhaps. Do you think that having bell ringers and red kettles outside stores is sort of the old way of giving and maybe the new way is to get a tax deduction and a receipt in a check in the I mail think, kind of thing? I think there's something to say for that but uh, 119 year tradition uh, my preference is not to just uh, quit and walk away mm -hmm. and the other bit of that I think is it, it, it lends itself to the fabric of the community I have an eight-year-old who's learning to give through the Christmas kettle program and I've had countless parents uh, in the region talk to me about you know if, if that's not a way to teach our kids I'm not sure uh, online giving doesn't do that as much. Giving at work doesn't do that as much. And so I'm concerned about the next generation learning how to give back in a yeah. very uh, in a very traditional way. Yeah, and especially, like you said, having the red kettle ringers out there, uh, it's visual. It's That's there. Exactly it's in right. your face. And you, you get a reminder all the time. And I think a lot of people might think it's just sort of a PR bit, but uh, we raised $1.3 million in the Washington region kettles uh, through the kettle program nickels dimes pennies quarters dollars fives all that so it adds up doesn't it sure it? does yeah. quickly tell us a little about the history of how this all started well uh, interesting 1891 an officer in san francisco uh, got really a crab pot put it out in the in, at the wharf and uh, uh, said i want to feed people through this because there were many uh, homeless and hungry in that area and so he collected money into the pot went and bought the food and uh, uh, created a stew that evening to begin feeding people. So it was literally the pot that collected the money that uh, fed the people. So that began that tradition. We're in 222 countries now, and uh, the Christmas kettle is recognizable around the world. What a wonderful story. It is. That's a great history. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Salvation Army itself. Right. How did the Salvation Army get started? Uh, a gentleman by the name of William Booth, 1865, uh, was a part of a Methodist church in England and uh, realized that there were people sleeping under the bridge. And so he went to figure out wh what causes people to be there, what the plight that brought them to that is, uh, and uh, realized that uh, they were, these were well-educated, some of them uh, uh, professional at some point, uh, but just came on hard times. Mm -hmm. So uh, he began a process of getting them soup, soap, and salvation in that order. Uh, and really, uh, his intention was to get them back in mainstream community, get them involved. Uh, the Church of England at that time was not as receptive uh, to that clientele as perhaps they could have been. And so uh, he began worship services. And uh, those are the people that went out and began collecting for the Salvation Army. So uh, it's very grassroots oriented. And uh, it's in every community all across the all, country. All across the world. Now and around uh, here, right here in the D.C. area, we have a huge need. Right. People out there that need the services of the Salvation Army. Tell right. us more about that. Well, uh, I heard on the last segment about uh, you having trouble paying your power bill or uh, not ha being warm enough in here. We help a lot of people with that in their homes, but maybe not in a business. But mm -hmm. uh, that's a huge need. People. Uh, there's a lot of families, 25% uh, uh, of the families this year have come to us for the first time. Uh, that's a huge uh, concern for us. The economy has They're, they're been making bad, yeah. their way, I mean, they're able to pay their rent, for instance, but they're short on food. Uh, can't quite make the utility bill. Christmas is a great opportunity uh, for them to be engaged with us because we want to make sure those children are uh, valued and appreciated and if, uh, if a family can't quite do that, we think the community ought to rally around and help them do that. So one of the best parts about giving to the Salvation Army is almost all of your dollar goes directly to the people That's that exactly need right. it. Uh, and you look for those administrative costs and how much right. that gets eaten up. And right. it, it's a very uh, cost-effective way of giving. About 83 cents of every dollar uh, goes right to programs. 
and 100% uh, of the funds that are raised in a local community are spent in a local community. So there's no sort of national uh, community foundation sort of thing. Uh, what money is raised here is spent right here to meet the needs in Greater Washington. All right, give us your best pitch. Why should we be donating to the Red Kettle Drive this year? Uh, we make a huge difference, uh, and we're going to help 13,000 people in the region, 13,000 children, uh, over 6,000 in Greater Wash in Washington itself in the district. And uh, last year, 83,000 people received some assistance from the Salvation Army in Greater Washington. So I think it's a valid uh, way to assist and be involved and engaged in something that's tried and true. Thanks for doing the great work. Appreciate My pleasure. that. Thank Major you. Steve Morris with the Salvation Army National Capital Area. Appreciate it. Good luck with the drive. Thanks very much.